Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from Black Sky. We have Scott Alexander. He's the co-founder and CEO. Uh, welcome to the show, Scott. Uh, thanks. I'm glad to be here. Terrific. Yeah, I've got your slides up on the screen here. Do you want to start with that? Sure. Uh, so uh, here's our uh, logo here, Black Sky uh, Computing with our rocket. And it's uh, both the name of the company and the rocket ship here are all nods to our aerospace heritage. Uh, we, uh, two of the three co-founders, uh, work for an aerospace company, uh, SpaceX, and they uh, were very frustrated with, you know, finding a turnkey high-performance computing solution where the hardware was optimized for high-performance computing. Uh, was also cost-effective. Uh, had the features you need for HPC, but not the ones you don't need for HPC, uh, and also a uh, frustration that there was no good cloud uh, high-performance computing service out there on the market. So uh, the vision is to really focus on purpose-built hardware and services for high-performance computing from a user's perspective, from an IT professional's perspective, uh, and so basically provide our customers with exactly the hardware they need for internal systems that are purpose-built, uh, as well as a uh, cloud service that we will be uh, launching in full production at the end of this year uh, that, again, is optimized and focused on high-performance computing and a lot of the special needs uh, that the high-performance computing uh, market has for, um, uh, you know, that is not addressed by traditional cloud computing services. So, uh, talking about our advantage, uh, you know, the main advantage really is a focus on high performance computing. We don't try to sell web servers retrofitted to the compute nodes or storage servers that aren't fast enough to handle the demands of hundreds of computers accessing them at the same time. So we developed a suite of hardware products that are uh, designed to re remove the bottlenecks. Um, we identify them uh, in a general sense as well as on each uh, individual customer's basis and uh, try to design a system that is optimized for that customer. You know, our goal is to sell each customer as little hardware as possible uh, to get the job done and then make it very easy for them to expand uh, their capacity later. Uh, you know, we've recently had a, uh, a showing at Seagraph and we found, uh, you know, especially with a lot of the smaller visual effects houses, that there are people that uh, don't fully understand the IT needs of high performance computing and they buy a render farm and their render nodes are running at 30% capacity because the bottlenecks the storage. Uh, and, you know, the instinct is to go out and buy more render nodes. So, you know, we try to eliminate those kind of traps by, you know, purpose building our hardware to all fit together well. Uh, in a very cost-effective way and uh, to avoid those bottlenecks. Um, our management team, uh, our CTO is actually a rocket scientist who uh, has spent many years uh, using high-performance computing systems to, um, you know, calculate CFD and FDA and, and uh, you know, all of the things that he needs for aerospace and uh, really sitting down and optimizing the HPC clusters uh, at his companies that he had worked for in the past uh, to make sure, uh, you know, to figure out how can you boost more performance, uh, where are the bottlenecks, uh, what are the issues that crop up. Uh, and, and also, uh, we approach this from an IT professional's perspective, uh, designing systems that are easy to set up and maintain, easy to expand. Uh, they have IPMI remote management capabilities. Uh, they're energy efficient, uh, and they're very space efficient with a compact design. Uh, you know, there's whoops, switch there. Uh, there's a lot of applications uh, and markets for high performance computing. Uh, you know, our initial market was engineering and uh, especially aerospace, and we're a company located in uh, Southern California. So uh, we're also uh, very involved with the visual effects community. Uh, life sciences, uh, you know, such as biotech is probably the, the most rapidly expanding sector in HPC. Uh, 
universities and uh, research facilities, uh, energy exploration and geology, finance, manufacturing, uh, we're finding that um, many different industries in science are, are constrained to how much uh, compute power they have available to them uh, and that it, it actually affects how quickly they can get things done. And, and so part of our goal, uh, which uh, well, I think is right here, is a vision of the future. Uh, there, you know, on the, with the hardware sales, a big part of our vision is uh, maximizing performance for the money, optimized and fine-tuned for each user, uh, state-of-the-art uh, architecture, you know, making sure people understand the benefits of high-speed network fabric, for example. All of our uh, hardware is designed to work on QDR and Finiband or 10 gigabit Ethernet. Uh, we uh, try to improve the ease of use and maintenance, uh, the space and power efficiency, and uh, plug and play future expansion. So, uh, you know, we're constantly working on uh, additional software layers to make the maintenance and uh, expansion very easy. Uh, but the future is really with cloud computing. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of challenges with cloud computing for the high performance computing industry because uh, traditional cloud computing is designed for a web servers. Um, and it's really kind of the opposite problem that you have with high performance computing. With traditional uh, cloud computing, you have virtual machines and you have uh, one single physical machine servicing multiple users at once. Uh, there's very little crosstalk between applications and users. Uh, there's uh, not a, a very significant amount of data being uploaded and downloaded. Uh, when you look at high performance computing, you have one user using many computers at once. They all need to be able to uh, communicate with each other rapidly. Uh, there's usually uh, very significant amounts of data being uploaded or downloaded. Uh, so uh, when you move this to the cloud, there's a lot of different challenges that come up, especially with uh, perceived security, as well as um, moving all that data back and forth. And there's also a lot of um, challenges in the, the sense that a uh, traditional cloud computing system uh, isn't set up for high-speed networking, high-speed storage, uh, things like that. So uh, we see the industry sort of slowly moving to the cloud uh, and uh, or the user slowly moving to the cloud. And uh, really the immediate challenge or the immediate need for users out there right now uh, really fall into two categories. You have very small users of high performance computing that either don't have the IT expertise or the budget to set up a cluster in-house, or you have uh, traditional uh, HPC users who have a uh, burst in their load and, and everybody seems to have these peaks and valleys and, and how much uh, compute power they need. So when they have a deadline and uh, suddenly they need twice the capacity that they had before or even just a 50% increase in capacity, uh, they have the challenge of do we go out and buy a bunch of computers for a, a high performance computing cluster, use them for two months, and then let them sit for the next eight months while they depreciate, or is there another solution? And so we see probably the next step in cloud for high performance computing will be people bursting their excess capacity or, or their peak load to the cloud instead of having to go out and buy hardware that they'll just use for a couple of months and then uh, put on the shelf. So uh, part of what we're working on in our cloud service is to integrate our cloud offering with people's internal resources so that it's uh, as easy and seamless as possible to uh, burst their excess capacity onto our cloud. Uh, but again, this is um, under development, and this, this is kind of a, a peak of our vision of the future. So Hyperion is the main building block of our product line. It's uh, we've, It's been in service with customers for a little over a year now. Um, it's uh, 10 dual Intel Xeon 5600 series uh, blades and a uh, 5U chassis. So we're 
fitting uh, two, basically two compute units per U. Uh, we can uh, handle up to the 5690 CPUs. So uh, that's something that is fairly rare at this density, uh, but we have some pretty interesting cooling solutions. Uh, so we can get that maximum performance for people if they need that. Uh, and uh, each uh, individual node is a fully independent processor. So if uh, a power supply goes down, you only lose one node. Uh, each node has a QDR InfiniBand port on it, uh, which uh, we also provide an adapter. So that can be four 10 gigabit Ethernet ports as well for people who are on Ethernet. Um, up to 96 gigabytes of RAM per blade. Um, it's uh, very efficient, very uh, over 90% efficiency on the power supplies. Um, so it's a very compact, very efficient, very cost-effective design. Uh, it's uh, very easy to fit a lot of compute power into a small amount of space. And we also make it easy for the customer by pointing out various configurations that make sense. Uh, customers tend to fit into two categories traditionally. One is the customers that have cheap software and they tend to want uh, maximum value for their dollar or maximum performance per dollar uh, in the hardware. Uh, the second type of customer has extremely expensive software, uh, you know, think aerospace industry, for example, uh, where they just want the absolute maximum performance per core because the cost of the CPU is insignificant compared to their software licenses. Uh, we're finding, though, that there's a lot of people out there that are starting to be constrained in capacity uh, by how much electricity they actually have to their building. And these are especially people that are trying to keep their high-performance compute facilities in their office space uh, rather than at a remote data center. So uh, we're, we also offer uh, advice or configuration on how to maximize your performance uh, per watt. Uh, so that uh, I think especially as people start thinking more about green technology and they think about when they start reaching these limitations as to how much they can expand based on power, I think this is going to become a pretty important uh, metric in the future. Apollo is the uh, storage array that we recently launched, uh, we found that most off-the-shelf products that were out there either had a uh, very slow I.O., which is unacceptable for high-performance computing, especially the visual effects industry where you have um, several terabytes of input files, uh, each being uh, read by each uh, render node. So if you have 100 computers all accessing several terabytes, and you only have uh, gigabit Ethernet ports on your storage solution, uh, your render nodes are going to be sitting there at 20%, 30% capacity while everybody's waiting for the storage. Uh, we found that storage solutions out there that had good I.O. Uh, tended to be very feature rich for things other than high performance computing. Uh, in fact, the, the focus tended to be on VMs and VM farms. Uh, automatic backups, automatic snapshots of data, things like that. Uh, so they were very uh, cost prohibitive. And so what we've done is we've developed a storage uh, array that's purpose built for high performance computing. It doesn't have a lot of the fancy software features in it for VMs and, and other applications, but just lots of you know IO, lots of raw storage. Our um, flagship uh, configuration of this product has 180 terabytes of data uh, or storage uh, for about $46,000 with 80 gigabit per second network I.O., uh, which is, uh, as far as we know, industry leading. Uh, the other interesting thing the Apollo design is that it's fully redundant internally. There's two motherboards, two power supplies, two sets of CPUs, two sets of memory. Uh, and two uh, QDR InfiniBand ports. So uh, if you only have one Apollo unit, you can configure it to uh, a fully mirrored configuration. Uh, so now you have half the amount of storage that you did before, but if any single component fails, 
uh, there's no interruption in service. And this is really important, again, for high performance computing, especially because if your storage array goes down, all the nodes that are using it are down too. So uh, this, uh, you know, part of our focus was to um, add enough redundancy into the system to minimize uh, potential downtime. Uh, this slide is specific to the visual effects and digital media, which uh, we focused on in our recent SIGGRAPH offering. Uh, so uh, part of our offering is turnkey render farms, uh, really listening to what the customer needs and making sure that not only do we have custom built uh, purpose designed hardware for high performance computing, but we also offer that level of service to, to make sure they get uh, the configuration that they need. Um, we have uh, you know massive data storage for anybody who needs uh, storage. We have uh, compute nodes you know, for render farms or, or any high performance computing system. And we also offer extreme high performance workstations that are uh, essentially a compute node on your desk. Uh, our existing product is in a full size uh, tower uh, desktop format. Uh, we are currently working on a design that we expect uh, to be out in early Q4 that will be an extremely small form factor. It'll be one of our Hyperion blades uh, with a chassis around it. So um, we're really excited about that and looking forward to it because it'll essentially be a mini desktop computer or, or, or sort of a, a very small power form factor uh, with dual Xeon processors up to 96 gigabytes of memory, uh, very high performance uh, video card, like a, an NVIDIA Quadro card that's uh, optimized for CAD, CATIA, visual effects, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, we'll stay tuned for that. That'll be coming out uh, in a couple of months. Uh, we have a few case studies here. Uh, we uh, serviced an aerospace company uh, that was having trouble performing certain types of calculations within a reasonable time frame, and uh, they were talking about buying more compute nodes, but we found in this particular case that the bottleneck was actually uh, memory. And so uh, when we uh, added a significant amount of memory and some high-speed scratch space, we were able to sell them significantly less hardware than they were planning on buying uh, because we took the time to analyze what these bottlenecks were. and uh, you know, made sure that uh, they were getting 100% utilization of the hardware that they were buying. And uh, they ended up having a significant performance gain over the, their old system, uh, and yet the money spent on hardware was less than they planned on their budget uh, because we were able to make sure they made the right purchasing decision. And this was a company that had a great IT department internally, but their expertise, again, and a lot of their training is with um, setting up uh, web servers, uh, setting up uh, network infrastructure for traditional office space, and it's very rare to find IT teams that are highly specialized in the demand of high-performance computing, and I think this is really where a lot of our value comes, is not just in the purpose-built hardware, but the consulting that goes with it and um, you know very educated sales process that um, really helps the customer figure out what they need uh, you know we've again with a small visual effects studio um, we uh, found that they didn't even have uh, an IT department at all in-house uh, they hired an IT consultant on an hourly basis um, and uh, you know they go to traditional uh, hardware providers, and uh, they try to sell them, you know, web servers or gaming PCs uh, to do their visual effects. They usually have um, just gigabit Ethernet. Uh, they sell them a very slow storage solution, and they plug everything in, and everything's waiting for the storage solution. Uh, they find the render farm is not fast enough. But they don't even realize that it's because the CPUs are running at 30%. So uh, 
so they go out and buy more render nodes, and now they're running at 20% or 15% uh, because the bottleneck the entire time is a storage solution. And uh, so I think the Apollo system is really going to make a big difference for people like um, the small visual effects studios or even the large ones, um, and really anyone that has a high performance computing application that has uh, large amounts of input data or output data. Thanks, Scott, for that. Um, just kind of a putting on your CEO hat here, um, you know, looking at this from the outside. When you guys approach a market with purpose built hardware, are there any drawbacks as, from your standpoint? I mean, are, are you limiting yourself to a very uh, segmented market? Well, I think, you know, it would be somewhat foolish for us to go against uh, Dell and HP in a, a sort of general generic market. And what we realized is that. Uh, while high-performance computing is a, a very small sort of niche market, it's still uh, $10 billion a year in hardware sales alone. So it's certainly big enough to support a pretty decent-sized company, uh, and it's a very neglected market, in our opinion. Um, you know, the, the really what you see out there right now is either uh, large hardware manufacturers that try to create systems that are good at doing everything, but not great at doing any specific thing. Um, and that's especially true for high-performance computing. Uh, or you get these um, really small sort of um, custom hardware providers that uh, have these interesting high-performance solutions, but you have to write your own software for it. Uh, you know, so that's um, what we really attempted to do is uh, build something that's purpose-built for high-performance computing that works with all the software that's out there and um, just gets the most performance uh, people can get for their money uh, with uh, an avoidance of you know, traditional pitfalls uh, where they you know, trying to avoid the possibility of bottlenecks being encountered. Sure. And, uh, you know, I was at SIGGRAPH... Uh was that last week? Yeah. And it seemed like you had a lot of traffic at your booth. What kind of reaction were you getting to the, well, to the Apollo product, but just in general from the SIGGRAPH folks? Uh, you know, we did get quite a bit of traction. Uh, I don't think we got more than a two-minute break on our first day. It was uh, uh, pretty busy. But, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of excitement about the cloud. Um, and, and so, you know, that's it's interesting because the cloud is very, um, it's a very complicated thing for people to adopt, but the smaller people especially are very excited about it because, uh, you know, owning your own hardware and figuring out how to set it up and maintain it and run jobs on it is a big barrier to entry for high performance computing. And it's actually slowing down the progress of art, of science. Uh, so, you know, the cloud is, definitely very exciting and it's definitely part of the future but it also needs to be something that uh, works right for the high performance uh, community uh, so uh, there's still a lot of challenges there but uh, a lot of excitement too so we're pretty confident that that's what's going to happen in the future um, there was also quite a bit of uh, interest in you know, our heart you know the, both the Hyperion and the Apollo system so um, you know, we uh, talked with some of the bigger visual effects houses, especially who, uh, you know, are um, certainly going to start comparing us or, or including us in their bid process when they uh, need to expand. Sure. So just to kind of wrap up question here, Scott, um, you know, you're a, kind of a, a small fish in the, the big HPC, as you mentioned, right, with these other vendors. But uh, what, what keeps you up at night? Uh, you know, a lot of it is, the biggest thing that I worry about is just um, how much there is to do. But it's kind of a good thing, too. Uh, you know, we started out with a focus on the cloud. Uh, then it became apparent that uh, it was going to be kind of slow for the cloud to be adopted because of uh, many challenges. You know, file I.O. is a big challenge. Another big challenge is... Uh, with traditional cloud computing 
uh, you set up an instance and you get a, a Linux prompt and your average uh, web admin who's an IT professional says, okay, this is great. I know how to set up all my software on this Linux prompt. But you give that to an artist or a biologist uh, or even a rocket scientist and they're like, what is this Linux prompt? You know, I just want my <laughs> software to, my job to run. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So there's a, a, an enormous software layer that needs to be built on top of whatever cloud solution is going to be out there for high performance computing. And people want not just lots of compute capacity, but they want it to be easy. And they want um, very little commitment. They want, um, uh, you know, no significant upfront cost. So there's a lot of both business challenges and technical challenges. Um, but for a small company like us, that's actually really good because it means that um, the big players out there aren't going to get it right away and they don't have a significant advantage over us. So, uh, you know, we uh, actually put a lot of our time and resources into developing software and uh, working on the, the cloud project. Um, but in the meantime, we're uh, very happy to be selling people this purpose-built hardware. And, and I think that, you know, as the market slowly transitions from everyone owning their own to it all being in the cloud, we're well positioned for uh, for either one of those scenarios as well as sort of a gradual transition between the two. Well, terrific. Well, hey, Scott Alexander, CEO of uh, Black Sky Computing, um, thanks for coming on the show today. Well, thanks for having me. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.